Hey guys, welcome back to the Stick Figure Historian. Well, we left Charles in a pickle last time with this Treaty of Rapon with the Covenanters, and once again, he decided to try Parliament. It had been a few months since the short Parliament had been called, but you may be sure that in that time, the old problems had not just melted away. No, indeed. Instead, they had festered. You know how when the grill's running with the lid on and something starts on fire and then you get to be the dummy who opens it? Yeah, well, that's probably kind of what Charles felt like when Parliament assembled. The demands for reforms and redress were louder than ever, but the king simply could not afford to be stubborn any longer, and so he yielded to their demands. First and foremost, all the new taxes King Charles had made were abolished, along with the old nuisance of ship money, of course. Many of the monopolies were also shut down, and finally, the notorious Star Chamber was done away with. And in case you're wondering, the Star Chamber was a court where people were often wrongly accused, given very unfair trials, and punished severely. Puritans suffered much in this court for their beliefs. Secondarily, the Triennial Act was passed. This was a law that Parliament must be called every three years. Yep, sorry Charles, that means no more personal rules. This secured, Parliament now turned from the laws to attack the King's chief advisers, Thomas Wentworth, the Earl of Strafford, and Archbishop William Laud. But they really hated Wentworth in particular. He had always tried to lessen their power and strengthen that of the king, and his tyrannical conduct as Lord Deputy of Ireland was also irritating. They determined to <clears throat> impeach him. A trial was held, and many complaints poured in against Wentworth, but nothing really serious, certainly nothing deserving of death, which is what the House of Commons really wanted. Anxiously, they scrambled about for any evidence to use against him. At last, a note from the King's Privy Council was discovered. A note suggesting that Wentworth had told Charles that if the English people would not listen to him, he should use the Irish army to invade the country. Ha! Now they had him. This was nothing short of treason. The Earl was thrown into a cell in the Tower of London. But as the impeachment trial went on, Ugh. I was afraid that was going to happen. But as the impeachment trial went on, things didn't go quite as well as the House of Commons had hoped. The note they found really only hinted that Wentworth had said the horrible thing. Or even that he really meant to say it. It didn't exactly prove anything. But that didn't mean the fight was over. They simply changed tactics and passed a bill of attainder against Wentworth, which basically means they accused him without fair evidence. The bill said that he had committed high treason and condemned him to the penalty for that crime. Death. The House of Lords at first opposed the bill, but the discovery of an army plot to storm the tower and save Wentworth frightened them and they changed their minds. Maybe Wentworth really was dangerous. Certainly he must be if the army was so loyal to him. Doom was too close for comfort for the unhappy Earl. Now the only thing standing between him and death was the king, for the sentence couldn't be executed until Charles signed the attainder. But this was something Charles just couldn't yield on. The money and laws were one thing, but his advisors? This was starting to look like Buckingham Part 2, and he was having no part of it. He promised Wentworth that whatever happened, he would not sign that attainder. In time, though, even Charles became afraid. Angry mobs swarmed around Whitehall Palace, threatening to hurt the Queen and the royal children. And Parliament was getting very impatient. Charles was worried that if he didn't give up Wentworth, they were going to go after Henrietta next instead. And here it is, we see another broken promise in history. Just in the case of the Saxon King Edward's faulty word, so many hundreds of years ago, 
This, too, was bound to end in much unhappiness. Charles signed the death warrant of his friend. There are different stories of how Wentworth received this news. On the one hand, there is an account that he had, before this, sent a letter to the king, begging him to sign the bill and let him die. He hoped that his death would make Parliament happy, and that they would get along with the king again. It looked to him as if a war were beginning, and he was willing to sacrifice himself for peace. This is certainly a very romantic tale. It paints Wentworth as a very brave and noble figure. Unfortunately, however, we can't really know for sure if this was true. Because in the second story, Wentworth is angry when he hears what the king has done. Put not your trust in princes, he is said to have grumbled. As with other mysteries in history, we will probably never be quite sure of the real character of the hapless earl. Whatever the case, Thomas Wentworth did indeed lose his head on Tower Hill. But Parliament wasn't finished yet. In contrast with the short Parliament of before, this one was to receive the name of the Long Parliament. This assembly was going to last 20 years, and it wasn't going to be pretty. As a famous narrator once said, But there was trouble ahead. But there was trouble ahead.